You know when you play video games, does this sound familiar? You play as an elite soldier. Yeah, sounds a bit like Halo. Could be Gears of War, could be COD, could be a number of games. The difference is the one we're showing you this week is an RPG and you play an elite orc soldier. The game is titled of Orcs and Men. I'm passing the reins over to Avery. Score and welcome to another exciting and edifying episode of the Gamer Station where today we're talking of, of orcs and humans. Now if you're looking for orcs and you're looking for humans you'll find both in spades in this action RPG. If you're looking for anything else, perhaps some decent gameplay, there is none to be found in this lackluster title. In this game you take on the role of Arkyle, who's one of the last elite members of the Bloodjaw tribe. The Bloodjaw are feared throughout the lands and are perhaps the last hope for the Greenskins in the war against the humans, which the humans are on the very brink of winning. You team up with a young enterprising goblin named Styx, who's charged with taking you through the dangerous lands of the Inquisition, an Inquisition which puts to the spear and to the fire numerous goblins and orcs alike. So it's an alliance of the greenskins, Satu Hijau versus the humans. And in this game, you pretty much have two major gameplay mechanics. Arkyle is tough, He's big, he's pretty much a, a tank. You could play him as a big tank or a huge damage dealer. And Styx can do two things. He can run out of the shadows, become nearly invisible, dispatch of his en enemies with a quick uh, cutlass to the throat, uh, or he can use his ranged attacks to great effect and kind of keep away from the fray. So the general tactic is pretty simple. You use Arkyle, the big orc with his huge muscles, standing about two meter 40 tall as a tank, and then you use sticks from the shadows to rain down a hail of daggers in order to pick off stragglers. And that's pretty much the game, rinse and repeat. Uh, so the gameplay mechanics aren't very varied, but the bigger problem is the combat system itself. In this combat system, you pretty much choose five commands at a time for each character, switching between them using the triangle key. And once you've entered these commands, your characters will initiate and execute their animations one at a time, uh, pretty much taking you straight out of the action. This is the kind of pause and deploy combat system that you might have seen in your Baldur's Gates, in your Neverwinter Nights, in your Icewind Dales, or even in your Mass Effect games. The difference being that in this title you feel absolutely separated from the action and you don't feel invested at all. Somehow in those other games that I've mentioned, they manage to strike a balance where you really do feel engaged in the action, even though the strategic nature of the combat system does sort of separate you from directly entering in command. At at times it feels that this game would have done better as a brawler where you could have engaged directly with your enemies, crossed swords with them, and actually felt powerful. That's an important point. If you're a huge orc, or at least half of your team is, you should feel really overpowered and you should feel like you're able to crush skulls and sweep guys up with your massive arms, and you never feel that sense of unbridled power and bloodlust. Uh, perhaps only when Arkyle absolutely loses it. You have a rage meter in the bottom of the screen. Once this rage meter is filled up, you can no longer control Arkyle. He goes berserk. There's, you know, tense dialogue with one of his blood jar brothers uh, at the beginning of the game who warns him of this unfortunate tendency that Arkyle happens to have. He's pretty much a rageaholic. He probably should go to anger management meetings, but clearly hasn't. So when he does go berserk, you lose what little control you do wield over his character and he'll pick up anyone nearby, including poor little sticks. If he happens to be in his feet, he'll pick him up and crack his back just like he would any of his enemies. So one of the key uh, strategies to the game is pretty much figuring out when you want this meter to overfill. You probably want it to do it somewhere near the end of battle, not too soon, because after your rage meter fills, after you go berserk and after you do some devastating damage, uh, Arkyle pretty much sits and slumps in the corner for perhaps up to 20 seconds doing nothing and is unresponsive to commands. Uh, so the problem with this gameplay system in general is that you don't feel like that you have a great degree of control over the combat. You feel pretty much like you're spamming commands. You may have had this sentiment sometimes when you're playing a massively multiplayer RPG that you're just some kind of rat sitting behind the keyboard, tap, 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 
entering your commands and waiting for them to execute. And abs that's absolutely what you feel here. Uh, there is no action in this action RPG. You're robbed of any sort of sense of immediacy. Beyond that, the characters aren't particularly likable. They're very one-sided, one-dimensional sort of archetypes. As you might imagine, Arkyle is pretty much gruff, no nonsense, he's a man of few words, and he just wants to get on with it and start breaking some heads. Styx, you know, as his diminutive goblin stature would probably lead you to guess anyway, is cunning, conniving, and obviously can't run straight into the fray. He has to use his wits. Uh, in order to vanquish his enemies. And he's always preaching a more cautious route and wisecracking. Uh, these wisecracks grow stale pretty much after the first 10 minutes of gameplay. Uh, indeed, there's a ton of cutscenes in this game. It seems like that almost every combat results in a lengthy cutscene with very stilted dialogue, poor voice acting, and perhaps no most noticeably, after every line of dialogue is painfully delivered, there's a pause, as if the characters all freeze. It's one of the many bugs in the game, but this one really, really takes you out of whatever investment you may have in the plot. A line will be delivered, then no response for perhaps up to five seconds. It absolutely ruins any sort of flow that the dialogue could hope to achieve. Furthermore, uh, speaking of the presentation of the game, the Unreal Engine is being used here and not to poor effect. The game could be called a technical achievement in places. Some of the lighting effects are great. Uh, when you're in darkened corridors, uh, the lights that you carry cast shadows and shimmer off of metallic surfaces realistically. So the power technically is there, but the artistry just is not. The textures are muddy. Uh, many models are used and overused until you see that a field littered with the same brush a hundred times just looks like a prop. Uh, this is an example clearly of technical achievement mixed with very little artistry. Furthermore, the character models are extremely boring, especially the humans which all look like the same guy. So either there was a very prolific sire who uh, gave birth to a progenitor of thousands and thousands of identical looking children, or this is just laziness on the part of the art team. I'll be honest with you, we were pretty much scraping the bottom of the barrel when we picked up Of Orcs and Humans. We'd already reviewed almost all of the AAA Christmas Link titles, and I was just hoping that this game would provide me with a few hours of enjoyment, but it did not do even that. In fact, it tortured my poor fingers and my poor eyes, and I hope that I've played it so that you don't have to. To be avoided, avoid this title at all costs, don't let it into your homes, lest it exact upon you the same cruel fate that it has on me. I'm Avery Score, and this was the Gamer Station. Alas, today's episode is at an end, but fret not, we shall be back next week. And in fact, I love this location so much here in Bangsa. We'll be back here once again. Looking forward to it. Plus, the GoPro Hero 3. We've got our hands on it, but I won't be reviewing it. We've got someone special to come and help us with that. And you might recognize him. He will be revealed next week. Now, in the meantime, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, you can find us in all three of those locations. Looking forward to seeing you online. My name is Adam Carruthers. Until next time.